All right, hello everyone. Um, so this is Professor Professor Xiaopeng Li, who has kindly taken the time to come to our Connecting to with Professionals event to speak for us. Um, today he's gonna give a talk about connected automated vehicles. He is currently the Susan A. Bracken First Holder Associate Professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, and is also affiliated with the Center of Urban Transportation Research at the University of Southern Florida. So whenever you're ready, Professor Xiaopeng, you can begin. Sure. Well, thank you, Julia. And this is a great opportunity for me to connect with, uh, uh, like Julie, Julia said, said uh, um, great uh, high school students. And I might have uh, some of my uh, PhD students with you guys. So it's a good platform for us to uh, communicate and learn from each other and, and uh, uh, I'm uh, working in the area of connected and automated vehicles, which uh, are related to robotics. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, that later. I have done uh, quite some um, uh, research projects and published papers there. But today, I think I just want to touch base with you guys about some uh, fundamental knowledge. Uh, as well as my thoughts about the challenges and the solutions. Um, so sure. So um, so I, I just I guess we cannot interact um, like uh, that much at this platform. But I meant to ask you questions about what uh, are automated vehicles in your eyes. So I, I might be, help you answer it my way because we probably cannot. Uh, um, talk to each other uh, here, but but basically automated vehicles are just, uh, you know, vehicles being driven by robots rather than human drivers. That's the ultimate uh, vision of automated vehicles. But of course we have different uh, stages. Um, not sure if you can hear my computer's audio. If you can, I can play some video clips from YouTube uh, talking about uh, the production or commercial vehicles that have uh, automated vehicle features. Let me try to play this. This is about Toyota, you, uh, uh, Toyota's YouTube video to introduce their um, automated vehicle function for longitudinal control. Uh, can you hear me, Julia? Um, can, I don't can you think so. can you hear the video? I don't think so. I don't hear anything. All right. Uh, I don't know how to share the video, but but you can check on. Uh, um, I think you can see the vi video, but not the audio. I can't explain. You know, this mm -hmm. is basically to say that, that there is a vehicle and it drives on a land and it, it you can set up the fallen distance from the preceding car. And if you set that, it's gonna automatically follow the preceding car or just drive it at the cruise speed. It is gonna adjust the distance and speed based on the preceding vehicle speed. Uh, so actually many production vehicles have this feature and I just wonder how many of you have cars with this. Some vehicles call it adaptive cruise control. Some vehicles call it uh, um, like a autopilot. So this is like um, many production vehicles have already equipped with this uh, uh, automated vehicle feature. I would say it's relatively low level automation. People call it level one or level two. And there are also high level automation that uh, are operating in the real world. So that's uh, this example is from the company called Waymo, which was also known by Google Car before it turned into Waymo. So you can see this uh, uh, video. So, so basically, you know, a person had get uh, into the vehicle by just a click on uh, cell phone app and, and this vehicle will come and you can get on and uh, over the route you know it's going to do other driving you can just uh, sit in the back comfortably and it can process all kinds of situations including some uh, like on some irregular object and it's going to drive uh, um along uh, the route uh, 
that was planned to get to your destination and uh, um yeah it can have it has all the information to have have you communicate with uh, the int the smart agent within the vehicle or the customer service right just in case and and then by the end i can fast forward uh, this this will park at uh, the right destination uh, it's going to find uh, you know the best location for parking and it, it give your panel for you to um, grade it and then uh, yeah after that you can leave it so that that's going to be that's probably high level automation this is like level four automation um and uh, just to give you examples of what automated vehicles are in the real world uh, so just to let you know, the Swimo operation is available in uh, Phoenix, uh, Arizona, just in case if you visit that city, you might try this service. Um, yeah, we see lots of great things. So the basic idea is um, a robot can drive the vehicle. Um, you know, you guys have been working on the vehicle. You know that this vehicle is going to have different sensors and has a computer and has a control unit and, and you know, with uh, different levels of technology maturity, you can do uh, just a simple, like that, that video on the left, following the preceding car or doing the complex maneuvers from and throughout a complete door-to-door -door service for uh, a, a, a rider. So what are connected vehicles? This term might not be as familiar as automated vehicle to you guys. So again, I'm going to answer it myself. So basically, it's wireless communications between vehicles and anything because you guys cannot hear the, the audio. So I can, you know, I, I can just play a little bit about it. So this is a... Um, a short video to show that uh, that the vehicles basically can communicate with all other entities so this way uh, you know you can have uh, vehicles to cooperate with other vehicles and have uh, them to work with uh, infrastructure units such as uh, traffic lights here you know and also have them to communicate with other uh, agents in the whole architecture of Internet of Things. So maybe talk to, you know, all kinds of buildings, talk to uh, other kind like restaurants, talk to uh, deliver service. So that's basically like um, the idea. It, it goes beyond automated vehicles to have one vehicle work with the other vehicles and uh, uh, that goes to the level of transportation systems uh, where vehicles can uh, um, work together you know, collectively to improve the transportation systems in the form transportation of connected vehicles. So uh, together the technology is called connected automated vehicles or CAVs. Um, Right, this is something I want to talk about in this uh, presentation. So we know, uh, actually, scholars uh, held uh, really high hopes for this technology uh, on various aspects. So first, the safety. Uh, and uh, research showed that uh, this technology could improve uh, safety by reducing over 94% of crashes compared to the existing vehicles. Mobility, that means uh, how fast you can travel and how many vehicles a uh, highway segment can handle. Uh, studies show that the CAVs could uh, multiply roadway capacities like tripled, quadrupled even. And with that, uh, you know, if a roadway can previously handle only like let's say 4,000 vehicles an hour. Right now it can handle like over 10,000 vehicles with that capacity, uh, you know, you almost don't have congestion, right? Uh, and energy, so, you know, 
vehicles that internal combustion engine vehicles burn gas or diesel and electric vehicle consume electricity and with proper CAV controls um, for individual vehicles and also for the whole transportation systems. People predicted that we could reduce 25% up to 50% uh, uh, energy consumption. So these are great uh, visions and uh, you know we can see that there's lots of potentials about uh, this technology. But and and uh, you know people were very confident about uh, the realizations of these potentials because this technology has been demonstrated almost like 25 years ago, right? Um, and uh, this is an example where Pat, which is a research institute at UC Berkeley, uh, conducted uh, you see the, the uh, um, on, on a highway. Uh, in California, basically, we have uh, eight vehicles retrofitted with uh, connected and automated capabilities, and uh, they can follow each other very closely, uh, like uh, separated by you know, six meters, <laughs> uh, even if they drive at uh, 60 or 70 miles per hour. And with this, you know, the roadway capacity increases a lot. And and uh, aerodynamics and all other benefits like like mobility and energy have been observed and, and have been observed. That was like 25 years ago. And then uh, this is what people envision, right? It's uh, of course it's a C CG uh, animation, but it really shows that in the future we could have uh, interact sections, uh, having all kinds of uh, uh, objects moving. Uh, in harmony without any collision with the maximum uh, uh, efficiency and with, with maximum mobility and energy efficiency. But have we got there yet with uh, uh, at least two decades of effort? Um, you know, I, I would say partially. If you look around, like I d showed in the, one of the previous videos, we have production vehicles that have AV or automated vehicle capabilities, like those with adaptive cruise control, and in many vehicles that many of you might have those those vehicles already in your garage, and this kind of a low level AVs increase at a very high rate from two percent in 2015 to a projected 40 percent in 2040, almost. 90%, above 90% of new production vehicles have um, this function. Uh, and and uh, like, like I said, you know, this function is overall called uh, uh, Advanced Driver Assistant Systems, uh, called ADAS. And longitudinal-wise, uh, the particular function is often called Adaptive, Adaptive Cruise Control, or ACC. Um, so l like the video showed, you can set uh, different uh, um, different uh, levels of a spacing. And after you set up the different levels of spacing, this vehicle can follow the preceding vehicle uh, closely. Um, let's just investigate um, how, uh, how much benefits this technology has realized against the benchmarks or hopes from the previous research I just as mentioned earlier. So first, the safety. It is reported that such ADAS vehicles could reduce the body injury claims by 27% and property damage claims by 19%. So it looks like it works for safety. And further for Tesla, um, which is also providing a level to autopilots. Uh, I mean, when I talk about levels, anyway, uh, so I may want to add a little bit explanations because so automations are like, uh, you know, they have five levels of automation. Five is the most automated and level one is uh, the most primitive automation. And level one and level two are most production uh, vehicles have right now. Um, so Tesla, which is regarded as level two automation, uh, the tracked uh, 
uh, mileage, uh, the mileage per collision or per incident, per crash, they compared the, their mileage. This is Tesla car auto pilot engaged with the average U.S. Uh, uh, according to NHTSA, uh, average U.S. cars according to NHTSA. You can see this mileage of one per one collision has been increased by 80 to 90 percent, which it, means that the crash rate reduces by 80 to 90 percent. So we can see that uh, these production vehicle technologies, commercial force, have uh, driven the safety uh, performance of vehicles close to the target and research prediction. So we're doing pretty good in terms of research. Uh, I'm sorry, in terms of the safety, uh, if you look at these production vehicles, but what about mobility? Like, um, uh, base, you know, let's just look at these technologies. So looks like uh, uh, these automakers may not be as concerned on mobility as safety. So they didn't collect the data for us. So we did experiments and we um, ourselves uh, using our lab vehicles and we also worked with other uh, uh, people to get their data. So basically, um, I, I don't know if you understand these charts, but let me just uh, quickly explain what these are. So we conducted the, some experiments with ACC. These are like a commercial AVs um, from an automaker. And once we have the data, we can calculate to the flow rate uh, versus the density, but you you know you basically don't need to worry about the density. Just look at the flow rate. So these are like maximum flow rate that road width segment can handle. I have different colors, but these are because the ACC has different levels, headway settings or spacing settings, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so this is for one production vehicle that has four levels of headway settings. You can see the maximum flow rate. Flow rate basically means how many vehicles that a road can process within an hour. Let's say usually the you know the, the current benchmark is 2,000 2, vehicles per um, lamb per hour. All right, so that's uh, the human-driven vehicles benchmark that is here. So this is a human. This is a current existing data, and we did the experiments and we plot out this flow rate, and we also got some data from. Uh, Partner, part, partner universities, and we plotted the, out their data. And we see that the flow rates of existing ACC vehicles are similar to the human-driven vehicles, right? Human-driven vehicles are the vehicles uh, that are running on highways today. So flow rate is an indicator of the mobility. The better the flow rate, that means that roadway handles more traffic, but we see that actually on contrary to the prediction that uh, CAV could improve um, the capacity by multiplying it. We see that they're approximately the same from these experiments. So we're still far from the target of multiplying roadway capacity with AV alone. About energy, again, we conducted some experiments. We collected the so-called vehicle trajectories, and actually their speed profiles over time, their locations over time, you know, so even if you don't understand them, that's fine, but we could measure the energy consumption, energy efficiency with this uh, trajectory information. And we found out that uh, ACC, which is a commercial a AV, um, can improve the energy efficiency, but only slightly. We're, there is still quite some room for us to improve, to reach the target. So overall, what you can see that uh, with today's uh, AV technologies, we can, we're in a pretty good trajectory in terms of a safety improvement, but mobility and energy are not quite, quite there. So. This is exactly why we need to connect connected vehicles, right? 
uh, we want to have connected vehicles to further enhance the safety, although automated vehicles are already doing good, but we, there are still some margin for connected vehicle to work on it. More importantly, there is huge potential for mobility and energy improvement uh, that AV itself cannot do as you see from our experiments. And uh, <clears throat> so the best outcomes would be integrating AV and CV or connected vehicles to realize the cooperative driving automation transportation to have vehicles connected together as neurons of a uh, integrated system not as individual drivers and uncooperative indi individual drivers right so that's a vision we have but less vision has lots of challenges you know federal communications commission fcc actually gave a technology called DSRC, dedicated short range communication, which is the communication technology allocated for CVs back in 20 years ago. But they took it back in 2020. So this 20 years is kind of like rolling back. That's a challenge. And while these, we see great exciting research and the piloting outcomes, there, is lack of evidence showing that CV benefits in widely implemented technology. So you don't see many vehicles running in the road today claiming that they have uh, equipped uh, with connected vehicle technologies. You may heard of this term and you may see some pilot projects here and there in different cities, but you know, in commercial products and in production vehicles, we don't uh, see some much tangible benefits from connected vehicles. So that is uh, the observation we have. And that's a problem I want to encourage um, students in my field, in civil engineering, in transportation engineering, to re realize the gap and, and to think about how we can improve these problems by addressing these challenges. So I'm going to talk about some of our thoughts and efforts in identify the challenges from the engineering perspective and trying to and attempts to solve them. And of course, these challenges could be from many sectors of the world, uh, but but I can just uh, talk about uh, most relevant ones from the engineering perspectives. So I would. Uh, look into the three levels. First is uh, system complexity. Second is technology maturity. And last is user incentives. And I'm going to talk about uh, the challenges in each category and some thoughts of potential solutions. And also I'm going to introduce some of our relevant work um, in addressing these challenges. So first, I'm going to talk about system complexity. Apparently, um, this is going to be a complex system. And we're going to, so the solution we provided is called system modeling. And I'm going to talk about that later. So what is a system complexity? OK, I'll explain. For automated vehicles, you guys may appreciate the uh, technology challenges. But since you guys are working on robotics, right, individual robots. Um, but the AV's technology challenges always on an individual vehicle, right? For, um, it's more of the individual vehicle sort of reactive control. Um, you know, you can only, for the automated vehicles that are, are running on today's roadways, You, the two basic things they are due all the time is essentially car falling and the land changing. This longitudinal control and lateral control. As long as you can solve these two control perfectly, then you have a very reliable automated vehicle. But for CAV, connected automated vehicles, what you have to do is you have to control multiple vehicles or coordinate the controls of multiple vehicles. And you have to do this in a predictive, predictive rather than only reactive manner. So here is an example. So, um, so horizontal axis is the time and the vertical axis is like the space, like the mileage. You can in, in, 
think about that them as a mile post along the highway. And these curves are the trajectories, basically the paths of the ve vehicles over that time. We call them trajectories. Um, you know, and there is this is an intersection. Let's say it has green light, red light, green light, red light, just like uh, what you observe, the green light and the red light alternation at the typical intersection. So if we have automated or if we have the full CAV technology, the vision is we can have these vehicles uh, just to cooperate with the traffic signal light. So they don't have to fully stop right at the intersection. They can slow down, negotiate with the uh, signal intersection green time. So this vehicle can just glide through the intersection without stopping. So this is going to have the best safety, mobility, and energy efficiency benefits. That's a vision. But in order for these vehicles to complete this, you can see they have to coordinate to each other, other very well. You know, you have to slow down before you get to the intersection, which is going to be counterintuitive to our today's human drivers, right? They always want to get to the intersection as fast as possible. Um, maybe let me change the pointer type. Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe you can see better. All right. So you may need to slow down in the middle. And also you have to communicate the, with the uh, traffic signals. Know when the signal is going to turn green or red in the future. In the future. Again, it's in the future. So you have to play your trajectory ahead of time. You're doing predictions. And you're doing control your trajectory for a long time horizon. So this kind of operations from the single example are a lot more complex than the individual vehicle control. So we have to have a whole new set of uh, modeling uh, technologies and methods to handle such complex system level control problems. Uh, so we actually have done lots of work uh, just to formulating and solving this kind of uh, complex trajectory optimization problems at, uh, for example, at an intersection, at other uh, roadway facilities. And, and also, you know, we are dealing with a system that uh, are not all automated vehicles. You know, if every vehicle is well programmed, everything is automated, that's going to be great, easy to control. But what we're handling in the real world right now is we we can we have to have CAVs to mingle with human-driven vehicles in sort of mixed traffic patterns. So you can see here, HV means human vehicles. These are regular vehicles that uh, uh, people see today, and red uh, curves are representing CAV's trajectory. So they may have different driving patterns. They have to negotiate with each other. To, um, and uh, HVs don't know how to cooperate. And CAVs have to sort of like uh, interact with these HVs in the best manner. You know, you have to handle a very complex system that uh, um, where CAVs are not only controlling themselves, but also pay attention to the interactions and behaviors of human drivers. We also have done quite some research here and published papers. Um, and the, the key of dealing with uh, mixed traffic is how to predict the human driver vehicle's trajectories because it's just that people's driving behavior is just uh, not that easy to predict. But in order to have automated vehicles drive well, you have to well understand how the surrounding human-driven vehicles work, drive. So, you know, we actually uh, worked with the government uh, and the companies on a federal project. We hired uh, uh, drones and also this helicopter this helicopter is really cool. It has three 8K uh, cameras and they can put shoot videos side by side. So we have this fly high above a freeway and get the really long videos. This is just a segment of it. We got like about 1.5 miles video and we use video analytics to extract 
um, the vehicles and then plot out their movements over again this time space uh, uh, diagram so we get lots of vehicle trajectories and from the real world and we can with these vehicle trajectories we can do the predict data analytics to analyze how people drive and i just want to mention that this is the this this helicopter was also used to shoot a hollywood um, movie like uh, uh wall, wall street uh, the wolf in the wall street or something i forgot the name you, you guys if you guys are a movie fan you may know that and, and of course, with the data, we have to develop the technologies. We've built of models and we um, tried the different uh, methods, including physics models, including artificial intelligence. You know, you guys, if you choose the engineering field and get into college, you will learn these uh, models and they're, they're, they're complicated, but they're very useful in predicting uh, and the, this kind of trajectories and also help control the automated vehicles. The, I mean, this is just one application. These methods are very general, can be used in many engineering problems. You know, if you get to engineering, try to get into, you know, particularly uh, uh, in AI technologies, artificial intelligence technologies. All right, so that's our thought about the why the challenges at the system complexity and the potential solutions we're working on. The next challenge is on the technology immaturity. And we want to handle that with technology innovations. So, you know, this is a vision, as I showed, to have vehicles perfectly coordinated with each other and the infrastructure units like traffic signals to maximize system uh, benefits on safety, mobility, and efficiency. But it is a lot easier to see this rather than compared with doing it. It's, it's, not, <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks to even control a, an individual vehicle to follow this uh, well-planned trajectory. We've done experiments with real vehicles to have a target trajectory target speed profile over time, for example, as the blue curve shows, and we run the state-of-the-art vehicle control technologies just to try to follow this trajectory, and you see how off this falling could be. You know, there could have huge speed errors, and that's going to cause to huge uh, uh, location errors, and if you use this technology to do this, you're going to have vehicles <laughs> collide into each other, right? So it is important for us to create new technologies uh, um, on top of what uh, current state-of-the-art automated vehicles technologies can offer us. It has to be us because uh, maybe automakers and um, the existing players are not that incentivized to look into the system coordinations only us as civil engineers transportation engineers have uh, a system perspective and uh, know the benefits uh, for the whole system and 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 thus we, we want to create uh, technologies uh, in our field and that's a call um, for, from me to all the civil engineering and the transportation students because the his uh, traditional transportation engineering is not that much into the technology, but right now the, the time changes that, you know, the, uh, the trends change. We have to be adaptive to the new technology trends and uh, change ourselves to be able to work with the technologies and create new technologies. Uh, just in case some of you guys are going to this uh, sector of engineering, this is my call as well. So this is our... Um, attempts we started with some robot cars maybe many of you are very familiar with this kind of arduino robot cars if you work on um like ro robotics we asked we basically control their individual vehicles trajectories to try to follow um given uh trajectory profile over time and space and once it's tuned well we have them to follow each other properly uh right the, they have done some um, field exp the, the lab experiment. And also we build full scale 
automated vehicles ourselves. Our, we have talented students from uh, multiple disciplines like um, uh, civil engineering, transportation engineering, um, mechanical engineering, computer science, uh, right? So, um, you know, if you guys are going to the engineering field in the college, these are good uh, majors that you can consider uh, to select among. Um, and we have put the team together and uh, assembled the vehicles in-house, you know, rather than buy a vehicle, we, our students design uh, everything, including the hardware frames and, uh, and software connections. We bought sensors one by one, just like you guys are working on robotics, we're working on a bigger robot, robot, right? So, and this is an introduction. I'm gonna skip it because you guys can't hear the video. Um, but basically, with this test bed, uh, we could uh, um, uh, we actually can show it around to important people like government officials, legislators, and VIP visitors. Um, but besides, we can also do some experiments. Remember, you know, there is one um, model that I presented earlier that shows how automated vehicles can cooperate or coordinate with the traffic signal light and this exam this experiment is just to realize that implement that in physical tests so you see here in in the uh, video on the top uh, there is um platoon of vehicles and the one in this red uh, square red rectangle is uh, the connected automated vehicle or CAV and other vehicles are human driven vehicles or HVs. So there is a signal light to downstream. It's, it's, it's red, but it's going to turn to green sometime later. So at the beginning, you know, these HVs in the downstream would just to get to the red light and stop without aware, uh, aware of being aware of when it's gonna turn to green. But this CAV is smart. It communicates with the signal light, knows when it's gonna turn green. So it's gonna slow down and glide through the intersection without stop. I'm gonna play this video so you can see it. So this vehicle would just get to the intersection, but the CAV is slowing down, still not stopping. But you see when it gets here, the signal turns green and the all vehicle it can pass without being stopped. So that's a nice thing of this cooperative control. And you see, it doesn't stop. Yeah, no stop is a big advantage, right? Non-stop. This is another example with one downstream vehicle. All right, you can see this vehicle stops here and this vehicle will just get to here that exact the right time. All right, and we also did the land changing experiment. Uh, yeah, so, and we also conduct that simulation, ver use that to collect data to validate our simulation model so we can. And why to do the simulation? Because we want to scale the outcomes from an individual vehicle experiment to the system level performance. That's what we're concerned. So we get the behavior from the individual vehicles and upscale that with the system simulation and we're also looking to the whole system design we call it edge computing cooperative control systems all the way from the cloud to the edge nodes to individual edge devices but these are just basically you know you know you, you, if you don't understand these terms it's just like a headquarter and the road side uh, computers as well as all these vehicles are working together to implement the comprehensive system control uh, leverage in the CAV technology. Um, and uh, these, this vision is consistent with um, FHWA is Federal Highway Administration is part of US Department, Department of Transportation. And they also have similar visions they, they are having cloud and, uh, and they have the street units and they have um, uh, like controls for the vehicles like messengers platform they call it called the karma ecosystem we are um, arguably the most engaged uh, university working with them uh, for to develop the algorithms for this uh, karma system and, and this is for the simulation of the developed algorithm but also we're doing the field tests 
uh, we uh, we're gonna schedule to, to do the first integration test for their first set of use cases uh, um, in the the end of the November, just in one one or two weeks away. Um, all right, I guess uh, the last is uh, I'm gonna be fast. User incentive is like we want to. Um, once we have the technology, we want to find an incremental way to have uh, users to use this technology. So, you know, and in order to promote a technology, it's not just about the technology itself. It's about the benefits to all the users, each individuals. And um, if you check on the why AV is successful, it's because the AV's benefits can be directly perceived by the vehicle owner or the vehicle rider right it's about safety comfort uh, but for cv on on top of av the cost is more on a system like congestion like energy you know the benefit uh, can prevail only at a relatively harm high market penetration rates if everyone is cv you're gonna have uh, such uh, um good information but uh, uh, right now, you know, these existing technology players, AV companies, TNCs, they are not much impacted by the system level benefits. So they are not willing to invest on the system with low penetration. So it's like chicken and egg issue. You know, you don't have the investment. The benefit's not going to be there. If the benefit's not going to be there, people don't want to invest. So there needs someone to break this chicken egg loop. And, uh, you know, we want to create... A, technologies to to cure the whole transportation systems and also um you know to 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 benefit the system as a whole and that have to be us i'm, I'm sort of advertising our field uh, because we cure transportation systems and we work on infrastructure so some some projects like a uh, uh, you know first we want to reduce the cost of cv only the cv cost is low um then uh, um then the um tech th then the automakers can add the, the cvs in their production vehicles and then people may may use it They're inspired by the communications with colors from sea animals you know they change their colors you know we currently you know we, we propose the technology to use light to communicate because these light devices are available on vehicles and infrastructures we have um so on vehicles, we have um, basic running lights, uh, you know, rear and uh, headlights, and, and they have v cameras everywhere. And for the infrastructure, we have all kinds of uh, panels, like uh, variable message signs, and also the cameras. So with existing infrastructure, if we can utilize these resources very well, we can enable vehicles and infrastructure to communicate at a really low cost because we can only upgrade their software so we have a department of energy project um working on these technologies to realize the communications and also control the vehicles based on the communication um, and we're also thinking about uh, how to incentivize each users to be able to cooperative in that cav paradigm it's being cooperative sometimes means you're benefit others not necessarily benefit yourself or sometimes even sacrifice yourself's benefit so we have to have a certain system to encourage people to benefit others you know if you're a cooperative and give others benefits then the system may return you some credits right you, or the other vehicles can give you credits for example if there is a person that is behind you saying that I'm, I'm in a rush, I want you to, to give me the right of way so I can drive faster. So a mechanism is he can pay you some uh, a small amount of money and you can just, uh, you know, make land change, give him the right right of way or so, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's just like this kind of mechanisms, uh, lots of new research opportunities. And finally, I want to acknowledge my collaborators and my students and uh uh, also colleagues, uh, and also I acknowledge the funding agencies that uh, enable uh, you know, many of these uh, research projects and our research outcomes. So I'm, uh, I think I'm about uh, a bit over 40 minutes. I'm going to stop here and I'll, I'm open to any questions. Thank you. All right.
Yeah, great. Thank you so much. This is a really interesting presentation. We have a few questions here. The first one is, um, what kind of cameras or sensors are used in automated vehicles? So cameras and sensors. All right. So I, I think I can bring you to a slide that uh, has, the, let me see. I'm going to use the. All right. Do I? Okay. This slide may show some some sensors. All right. So it has this. It has a camera. So basically, it is a floor camera um, with uh, uh, you know it is a um, it's just like a grayscale ca uh, camera, and we also have like mobile eye that is also. Uh, a camera that has uh, automated land detection functions and object detection functions, but camera is only just the cameras are only a part of the sensor systems. We have a whole bunch of other sensors. For example, this cylinder you see here is called the lidar. So, um, so basically, it, it shoots out to the laser beams and it rotates so it can get distances of the surrounding vehicle so it's going to give you a 3d map of the surrounding uh, environment including roadway and vehicles and we also have like an imu internal matter unit and the gps navigation units you know they're together to um, g give the vehicles information about where you are at what the speed or acceleration you're at all right, all right. So these are the sensors and also we have radars here and here these are for two side radars to perceive the vehicles in other lands for land changing purpose and this is a front front radar to detect the vehicles in the same lane to complete uh, adaptive cruise control for example i see okay great thank you um the next question is what are some of the negative aspects of connected automated vehicles if there are any yeah, this is a good question. You know, I would always encourage you guys to think uh, about uh, two sides of the story, right? Two sides of the coin. Um, so, of course, first of all, you know, you're going to see the vehicles uh, being more expensive, right? Um, because you have to install these sensors, the computers, and the control units in the vehicles. Um, if you're just, uh, it, it, it you know, I can't tell you how much they sell for a, a sort of like lab vehicle. Some companies sell lab automated vehicles right now. For a vehicle, for this, for example, the vehicle alone is like um, maybe less than 50K. Um, and they add some components and they sell it like uh, around the cost range of 400K, 500K, so like, like more than 10 times. Of course, uh, this cost wow. is going to drop for mass productions because this is just for research and they just assemble one or two of them for sale. But still, these sensors and, uh, you know, these this control units are uh, very expensive. So that's why we proposed this uh, project uh, sponsored by department of the Department of the Energy for low cost uh, uh, CAV technology because users and automakers are very sensitive to, to that. That's one drawback. Uh, that's that's a major limitation. And some other things, you know, you can think more of, of that is once you have technologies upgraded, you know, people are not used to technologies have to be adaptive to them, right? How to drive in a, a traffic stream where everybody else is just automated connected vehicles, but mice is still old school, right? Old, old school vehicle uh, without any of these fancy electronics. That, that, that is also a challenge uh, for particular user groups. I see. Okay, great. Um, next question is, what made you become so passionate and interested in automated vehicles and connected vehicles? Yes, I think, uh, you know, it's it's due to my profession. So I think there are a couple of missions of my uh, job. And the first is uh, to advance 
engineering by technology and methodology innovations you know uh, professors collectively have the responsibility of advancing the the technologies right we are research institutes what what's the definition of research that is uh, developing something new and cv and av would be the uh hottest areas and in, in, in among the hottest areas in the transportation and related fields that uh, have plenty of uh, potentials for innovation for technology development because uh, they're not perfect yet as i mentioned right there is lots of challenges and that gives us opportunities to address these, these challenges and apologies for the background noise um so and, and uh um, also, another mission is uh, we are educators. We want to uh, let uh, others uh, to um, let, let let next generations to um, uh, be able to learn the upfront uh, technologies, cutting edge technologies, and uh, you know get into the engineering workforce and help. Uh, uh, improve the world and make tomorrow better so so and this is a good uh, uh, area where we can proliferate our knowledge and uh, pass down that our uh, studies and effort to the next generation wow that's great all right um next question is can you elaborate more about your career path and how you got to where you are now you already mentioned this a little bit but if you have more you can add on uh sure yeah so my career path it's like you know i i, I think i because um i and um, i really liked uh, sort of like uh, new technologies in a way you know because i i was born in a more of inland area in china and uh, actually um transportation technologies would be something really fascinated my childhood because i observed the uh, whole process of uh, you know traveling with uh, from a very simple bicycles all the way to fancy uh, cars uh, and also it took me a lot to, to uh, it, i had lots of challenge to travel to a uh, uh, different city when i was young you know i, I had to walk and take uh, take a, a bus and take a train and you know, have really intermodal transportation to get to, to my college. So that's why I was, I, I think that I could probably get into this profession to help improve the system. And also, you know, in, in the college, I was fascinated by the computer science development. So I got a degree there and I thought, you know, lots of computer science and, uh, you know, relevant to uh, high tech, uh, knowledge could help um, us improve the transportation system so this is where i converge to today's uh, uh my my uh, today's career plan and i'm still learning and i'm still um trying to improve myself and uh, part of this communication with you guys is my learning and i you know it's like i'm uh, giving you a lecture about the knowledge I know, and at the same time, I want to learn your perspectives to to help um, sort of like like know how I can do better to uh, impact uh, the next generation, particularly the case like the, your your guys high school students, right? Yeah. All right. That's great. Um, next question is: Which of the projects that you worked on is your favorite? So, what's your favorite project? Well, this is a difficult question. You know, I have worked on tens of projects and I have never thought about uh, ranking them. It's just like uh, to ask you, what is your favorite thumb? And then you're going to, if you haven't thought about it, you're going to have uh, tons of names flying in your mind. Uh, and, and I think, yeah, so, so these are all, all great projects. And I, if I, you know, in this context, I would say, you know, what, this this is a, a project that I really like, you know, just like I mentioned uh, yeah. here. It's oh, a, yeah. yeah, it's like um, this is a we're sort of like this is a very interesting project. It's like um, 
having vehicles to communicate uh, using flashing lights you know that that's uh of course it's the, the nice thing about this project is it's very challenging and uh, cutting edge from the low level technologies so it needs uh, uh, people from uh, electrical engineering computer science looking to the very elemental level technology so we have a team very interdisciplinary team uh, with people doing that and also it goes all the way up to the whole transportation systems performance. So, so I really like this kind of project that has an elemental technology innovation as well as as system uh, um, development. Uh, so, so this is a, an example of the favorite projects I, I like. All right, yeah, that one's really interesting. Um, here's the next question: From human-driven vehicles to automated. Con connected automated vehicles, what do you think is the next step for vehicles if there is one? Yeah, so, right, yeah, this is a great question. And I encourage you guys always think about what's going to be the next because you might be the people who will create what's going to be the next or uh, help accelerate uh, what what's next to become real. Uh, so I think, you know, there are lots of new technologies uh, going on, you know, one, one thing that uh, catches more attention, increasing attention from people is called flying car or, or urban air mobility. You might have heard of that. Yeah, lots of uh, yeah. tech companies have uh, started to invest on this area and, and, you know, Uber already started working on that a long time uh, ago. And, uh, you know, this is uh, maybe... One day we're gonna see flying cars around, and not necessarily car, cars flying, but uh, having drones and uh, you know some passenger ve passenger vehicles flying around to deliver goods and uh, products. You know that's something you can pay attention to. But there are other technologies like a hyperloop, uh, like uh, you know autonomous pod uh, that to trans transport the human beings individually, like very fast underground you know these are all good technologies to take a look at yeah all right um okay great next question is why have connected automated vehicles not completely taken over yet it seems like such a system would be easily superior to human driving yes yeah this is a all all my presentations about i explained the challenges right from the system level complexity from the technology maturity and from the user incentives. So um, we know uh, technologies from the time it, it, you get a concept and prototype, prototype to the time when it's get when it gets widely implemented, it takes time and effort. It's an engineering problem, but it's also involves all sectors of the of society, such as, uh, you know, uh, workforce such as uh, uh, like business, financial. You know, it, it's just a really complex uh, process to have it uh, uh, percolate to through the, the all sectors of the society. So, and that's why I like to talk to you guys. I would encourage you guys to get into this arena and help us think about uh, solutions to these uh, challenges from the engineer perspective, as well as other perspectives like social science, like politics, like uh, uh, business, um, you know, so uh, collectively we hope we can advance this technology and have them uh, become a reality and benefit the society sooner. Yeah, all right. Uh, and this next question is very similar to that one. Let's see if you have anything to add on. What is the most critical challenge that prevents us from using AV in our regular life? Um, can, can you say that? What is a critical, yeah. uh, most critical challenge that prevent us from using AVs uh, in our regular life? All right. So yeah, I said a number of challenges. Uh, what? You know, I think if I want to rank it, it may be the safety, I would say, you know, if you guys are not confident about AV safety, yeah. so you may not dare to ride it. Yeah. All right. It's great. I think those are all the questions. So if you don't have anything else to add, 
Um, then thank you everyone for the questions and the enthusiasm. And thank you to Professor Xiaopeng Li for taking the time and energy to speak, come here and speak for us. Um, this presentation was really interesting and knowledgeable. So thank you so much. Thank you, Julia. Yeah, in the end, I just want to express my thanks to you for this great opportunity. And, you. you know, feel free to contact me if you have further questions. I think you have my an email address, right? Um, and I have a website. Please uh, check on it. And feel free to shoot me an email if you guys want to learn more about uh, our work. Thank you guys again. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I think we're going to end it now. All right. Bye-bye. Okay.